Welcome to a special episode of the Memphis Mata Show. Uh, ready? Uh, back again with a special guest. Special guest. I'll tell you, a, a man who needs no introduction. You know what I think? I think we'll let uh, Mitchell Creek do his own introduction. Oh, thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give us, give us who you are, the background. Why the fuck are you on? Why are you on? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm I'm a country boy uh, from Horsham, Victoria. Uh, 26 years old. I played with Adelaide 36 for the last eight seasons. Played in Germany. Done two NBA summer leagues. Just signed an Exhibit 10 contract with the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, played with the Boomers on several occasions now, and um, won a gold medal world championship. First Australian team to ever do it. First Australian to ever win an MVP there. Um, two national championships, MVPs there, went to the Institute of Sport. So I've done one or two things uh, through my sporting career. So. I feel, you know what I feel like? I feel like, I feel like you've rehearsed that in the mirror. Right? That's like Channel 7 shit. This isn't Channel 7 I've shit. I've had to say it before, so I'm on point. Yes, I'm on point now. Uh, I think, you know, did you watch the first episode we put up? I did, I did. I feel like we addressed some points in the first episode. Alright, so the first episode of the Murphy Mike Show, we talk about Mitchell Creek exploiting Murph for five years. Alright? From your five point, years. was it five years? No, we said we said twelve months. Twelve months. Yeah. Uh, a good twelve I'm, months of ex exploitation. All right, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with twelve months onwards. What was that like for you? Like when all that started for you, from your perspective? So how did that sort of begin? And from that, are you like you know, cool, we're just training, whatever. Like we've got what from Murph's perspective. I want to hear from the fucking Greek's perspective. So basically, I obviously had Murph through the Woodville Warriors. Mm -hmm. um, I got a glimpse of what he what he was like, what he was doing, uh, the way he went about his business, and the duty of care he took with every single person. Um, he didn't treat anyone the same. It was always, you know, how you were and, and who you were as a person, as an athlete, and what you wanted. You were treated differently. Now, some people always say, you know, you never treat anyone differently. In the, the, the personal training, strength conditioning, you know, sports, <laughs> you, everyone has to be treated differently because <laughs> no one's the same. And Murph did that, and we had how, a train. How so? Like what specific things? Were I think Murph the individualization. You know, he knew who I was and where I played, and he knew that I was coming in. I didn't do as much of some of the sessions as others did. I would, you know, be doing different parts. He, you know, he knew that I was cut from a different cloth. So when it came to you know asking questions, I would get a more in-depth answer because I understood it. I knew the the you know the anatomy behind it, I knew the reasoning behind it. And he, background and training. And he yeah and he knew that as well. So we clicked from day one. Um, from Superman workouts, running around St. Clair and St. Michael's and you know, from all the, the stuff at training, the conditioning, the Tabata running, all that kind of stuff, the way he pushed everyone and especially me. You know, we had a trainer at the six at the time, it was kind of mid season I think and, and I came to Murph and said, Hey mate, can we do some stuff? And for twelve months, while well, we still had a uh, you know, a strength and conditioning coach here at the Sixers. You know, I just, hey man, you want to do some stuff? Was it was it uh, was it like sanctioned? Like you're allowed to go do that, or was it kind of like on the deal? No, it was it was a little bit of both. I, I spoke to the trainer we had at the time, and <laughs> you know, I said, look, I'm doing my own stuff as well um, because what we had it was very team based. Like this is the session we're today we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's doing it, and I still did those sessions, but I still went and was with Murph two, three days a week, and then it gradually went from. You know, one to two to two to three to three to four to five days a week to almost every day we were doing something. And, and then basically that pre-season, I spent the whole time with Murph. We live streamed basically every single workout. He had my little spew bush where he cut out a little square in the Creaky hedge. Corner. Creaky, Creaky corner. corner. I, I literally had a spew bush because I was throwing up every couple of sessions. Um, yeah. And he and just- you've experienced that. As I've yeah. experienced it at the gym. And um. you know, that's, that's what it was like. It was. It was the knowledge and the power that he had and, and the you know the curiosity I had to get better and how I wanted to push my body. Mm. He knew how to push me without breaking me. Yep. And he knew what my body could get from a workout without trying to get too much or trying to push it too much on that day. So ever since, you know, I, I always had time, respect, I recommended plenty of people to him and the opportunity came and I said, Look, we're getting a new S and C, what do you think? Now was this was this the first time that you fucked it up? Or the second no, time you fucked is, it up? This was the time. This was the time. Got it. Yeah. What about the time you forgot? I don't want to. I don't want to. Didn't you forget to tell you it was coming up? Was that the time? No, no, no. no. Correct so, me. Correct me, because I, I went through the was, last episode and was. While I was with Woodville, yeah. Um, Freaky said they they are looking for someone. Yeah. They found someone and no one had told me that they found someone. So I'm That's still like, right. there's a possibility. There's a possibility. You, you like, had I asked Freaky one night after a game. He's like. They found something, they tell you. Like, no. So I think, yeah, that's right. You, you'd asked about it. 
they got someone, hadn't notified the other applicants basically. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh well, he got the job and we just don't tell anyone else. So yeah. I think he was kind of like, and I was the same. I was like, why did we not get him? Like, yeah. you are stupid. And I literally had that conversation at the time. And thankfully, you know, he stuck by him, you know, himself and his work and his knowledge and grew that. And his passion grew more, and, and obviously knew that he wanted to be an NBA tr a strength mm. trainer one day, and, yeah. and be in there in some kind of shape or form, and work his way up. And the opportunity came with the Sixers, and you know we've had him for a couple of years now. I think we've probably been, as you can see from our results, one of the fittest and strongest, most dynamic teams. Mm. And yeah, we've had a few injuries, but every team's had them. Yeah. And you know specific injuries I've had, I had you know I broke a second uh, in my foot. Coming back from that, I was two, two and a half weeks ahead. You know, that's mm -hmm. Murph, that's, you know, the physios we had, that's all the time and place we put in. Shout out to Tristan. Um, yeah, 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 good physio. Yeah. Good, physio. Um, good physio. You know, Tristan helped me with it as well with Murph in the gym. And, you know, we'll, I came back every single time. I came back fitter and stronger. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we were just, and it enabled us to be the championship caliber team we've been the last two seasons. And funny enough, He's been here for two seasons as well, so. Correlation, causation, what are we, what are we talking about? Can, that's the shoulders <laughs> up. He's allowed it, you know, he's already got a big enough head, but he's allowed it, this one just expanded a little bit more. That's, that's, why, we're in the, that's why we're in the stadium today, which is like a miracle, right? The, I think, for me, the injury, obviously last year was the hamstring off the bone. Yep. But how was that for you going through that? And then your rehab, you came back quicker, didn't you? Was that right? Yeah. yeah. Like, um, what, what is that situation like when it happens? When you feel that and you're like, oh fuck, hang on, this has happened. And then getting into rehab and doing that sort of stuff and coming back. How did you go through that, like mentally? And then obviously you get one around you, but. Yeah, I mean, it's hard because I didn't do it sprinting up and down the court 100 miles an hour. I overstretched it before tip off. You know. I straight leg, bend, touch potatoes, one side, one side, let's play. And I went, one side, oop, the fuck was that? Yeah. And I knew straight away, I just felt something flick and roll off and a sharp pain, and I was like, I know I did my, I just did my hammy. And then I was like, I didn't pop it, but I did it enough where it, yeah. and I, I played about 30 seconds. And I, I literally looked at Joey straight away on the tip and was like, like, sub me up. He's like, uh, what are you talking about? So you, I was like, played, you played and I, that. I looked and I'm like, touching my hammy. And I was like, like I, did, I did my hammy. And he looked at me like, he's like, what the fuck is Creaky trying to say? <laughs> and I literally, um, the first play, uh, the player they had had, Tokido, yep. we, I was looking forward to this matchup. We played summer league together. It was my first time playing against him. We'd been talking shit to each other. We were mates. We'd been Snapchatting and stuff. And the first tip off, I do my hammy. And I was so shattered. And I knew I did it straight away. They ran a lob play for him. I tried to switch late because I'm like, fuck, I can't talk, my hammy's gone. And I switched and it was late. And they caught a lob, dunked it, went down the other end. No stopping plays. I'm trying to like, I need a sub, I did yeah. my hammy. And the refs are kept, I'm like, ref, I did my hammy. <laughs> they went down the offensive end, then we, uh, so we went down the offensive end, mm. then they came back, and he's got the ball in transition, like winding up, but I'm like trying to play defense. He hits a pull up on me, and I just stopped. I was like, I'm about to tear it completely off the bone, and I just stopped. And I was like, I'm done. Went in, iced it up, looked at their physios, and, and just they just said, like it's, it's, it's done. Um, Did you get a roasting up for the game though? Like, couldn't come. I got. I had people. Yeah, I, saw on so you, I saw you take me up. Like, I, had, I had people on social media kind of lash out and be like, you know, if you're gonna take it like that, take it like a man. Yeah. Like, you know, don't bitch out, do a challenge. And these are these are like fans or followers uh, players. Or you know, ex players I yeah. play with and stuff as well. And look, that's competition. You yeah. know, they didn't know at the time, so that's completely fair. There was nothing bad by it. Look, if I see something like that. I would want to say something, you know. I know that as I, I got a big platform of media, so I'm probably not going to say it. But you know, I, I had a. They're like, look, it's going to be probably six to eight weeks. Yeah. Eight weeks probably going to be perfect. Six weeks you'll be playing again. Yeah. And we came back in three and a half, four weeks. Yeah, I think it's pushing five actually. Yeah. Yeah. Like right, yeah. So four yeah. weeks, I think we started training, and yeah. then on the fifth week we had a game. Yeah. And well, that was no surgery. no surgery. No surgery. It was basically it was half of the bone. Um, it, it was cryotherapy down at minus one ten on Hutt Street. Shout out to you guys. They've been okay. I, I, just unbelievable. They've been oh huge for me. Yeah. Um, it was a session in the morning before training. Mm -hmm. I would train. I would go in there, do a local session, like mm -hmm. a local fire on the on the penguin on the hammy. Then I would go in at the night time and do another full body penguin again. Yeah. Every single day. 
So are we talking, was it, was it Julie or Mara or Paul that had to stay around and wait for you to come in? So all three of them were there every single day yeah. and they would give me times. I would go in before that open some days yeah. and they just put me in, let me use it. And it was an every single day thing. Five days a week, I was there every single day. Right out. Straight in the gym. We're gonna, we're gonna work towards that type of like, open up a cookie to come in. We're gonna come in after work. Yeah. All right, you're gonna open the doors first. We're gonna get to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, we've got limited time. So how long we got like, about five minutes or so? Five minutes. Minutes. Something like that? You're off to Brooklyn. Yep. Talk to us about time here, heading off, your thoughts around leaving Australia. Leaving Australia. Your comfort zone going to America and taking it on. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something that's only hit me the last kind of 48 hours and I found myself driving, I found myself on the phone to, you know, one of my best friends, Stephen Finney, I'm, I'm a godfather of his son. He, he FaceTimed me a couple of days ago and I, he's like, hey, how you going? Are you excited for the move? And I just started crying and I was like, I'm nervous, I'm excited, I'm scared, I'm everything. You know, I, I want to be good enough. I don't want to not, you know, feel like I can't compete. I want to be able to be the person I believe myself to be. And, and that's the, the realization you have as a professional athlete. When you take that next step, I'm playing against guys that now are going to make between $1 million and $20 million. You know, and trust me, I'm Even not season, and, yeah, I, and, season. and I'm not making that. I'm not even remotely making. I'm not making much at all. So the the, the misconception of oh, you know, you're going there, so you're going to make millions of dollars. No, 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 it's not like that at all. I've worked my ass off for the last ten years, every single day, to get an opportunity. So now you've almost got to prove yourself again. So I have to, to stay there. I have to make this opportunity the most important, driven, focused. You know, I have to be the most curious, the most desired player there to be better every single day. That's strength and conditioning, nutrition. They got a chef there, speaking to the chef, like what's, what can we do to do this? I'm, like physios, like video analysis, scouting, analytics, coaching, shooting coaches. I had Alan Houston just recently in the Basketball Australia thing come and say, hey, I live in New York. I'm doing stuff with the Knicks. Let's get together and do some stuff. Like I'd love to help you. That's sweet. A two-time NBA so, champion is offering his services, yeah. just in case anyone's wondering. I was about to say, who, who's out of Houston for those that don't he, know? He, one of he, the best shooters. Arguably, the, the, I mean, hands down, I think, the best set shooter the NBA ever made. And I'm talking against Ray Allen, Reggie Miller. <laughs> Reggie Miller was worth my pick in, uh, like, NBA 2007. Crazy. Well, this three, guy three is... Comp. This guy's good. Yeah. This guy is amazing. And he offered his services, said, hey, mate, let's do some stuff. You know, I love what you're about. Got, you know, got his details, got his number. He's like, hit me up when you get over there, we'll, we'll get, into the, get in the gym. Now for me, I have to be curious every single day. I'm not gonna be curious one day and be like, oh, I'm tired today, I'm like, no, no, no. I'm tired every single day. I don't know what fresh is. I don't know what 100% feels like. I haven't felt that for a while. Especially with this animal, he, uh, he doesn't let you understand, well, hey, you know, you get four or five days, let's get your treatments like, oh yeah, you feel like a big bit of jelly, you know, wet bit of spaghetti. You just, it's working at a sustainable level to make measured, improvements mm. over a consistent period of time yeah. and that's all I'm going to do there. I'm not going to try and be an NBA superstar, mm. I'm going to try and be the best Mitch Creek I can be and if that's not good enough, I can live with that. If it's good enough, you got a job, you got a job, <laughs> <laughs> you, can, then you can come over. But right now it's, it's literally just going in and being meticulous about my perfect preparation every day mm. to be better. Is that the, uh, the tight crane coach, Coach Carter? Right. Yeah. Come right. There's only one tight crate, that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, <laughs> so from that, so you've been here, how long have you been in the Sixers for? Eight years. How's it feel leaving? What are your thoughts on that? that aspect? I think as you ask that question, as I, ask the question I need to uh, get that picture you showed me yesterday yeah, of the pimple actually. faced Pitch <laughs> Creek. Are we going to put it up? I'll put it up. I'll okay. put it on, this, on the video when we put it up. And I'll, I'll put it in the show notes when that comes yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, this is right. a before and after. So I, <laughs> the guy came in. 17, I, ha I had my first run around here. I, I came in and had a look and I turned 18 with like basically a couple of weeks after I was here. You know, I, I came in for an injured Nathan Herbert um, who did his knee that season, signed a three-year deal under Marty Clark and, and Mark Radford. Learned a lot there. Joey came in, spent five, five years with Joey. You know, my time wasn't, I wasn't a star from the get-go. I wasn't a, a main player. I was a 10th player on a 10-man roster. I barely, I played more than 10 minutes a game for the first couple of years. Even when Joey came in, I, I was still at 15, 16 minutes, if that. Some days I'd play 25, but the majority was around that 10 to 15, and I had to work my way into it. So I started at the bottom and worked my way through to a captaincy, you know, to a leadership role, 
to a, a club MVP to an NBL fans MVP. So my journey wasn't as smooth sailing as it was. I had a great junior kind of career. And then the pros, I spoke about it yesterday. I didn't know what professional, the definition of professionalism was until I came here and learned from the best players in Australia, the best coaches, the best SNCs, the best physios. I, had, I hadn't known the understanding of it. So my transition was a long, slow, grinding journey. But I did it every single day in the order to, I'm going to be great one day. Now, along the way, people might say, hey, you're great now. In my eyes, I'm my biggest critic and my harshest opponent. And every single day, I challenge myself to be a little bit better and to be a little bit more curious about something. Never be satisfied. Never be satisfied. Get better every single day, just a little bit. And to do my time here, I, I looked around before I sat in the stands and just took one last video of like everything and let it kind of soak in. And I'll probably walk out of here and, comes out. you know, it, it's, I've had, I came in as a boy and I left as a, a man. You know, and I came in as a, you know, a player that didn't know much about the game to a selfless leader. And that's for something for me, that was character building, that was hours and hours and hours of mistakes and wrong, you know, decisions, bad choices, personal, private, on court, in the public. It went from a range of everything. I haven't done it perfectly, but I wouldn't have done it any other way. You are who you are today because of all that shit you've had to go through. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's made me to, if I didn't go through it, I probably wouldn't be here. Yeah. So, you know, it's a, it's a hell of a journey, that's for sure. That's very cool. And Mitch has got to go for lunch. <laughs> we let Mitch go for lunch. It's our uh, little special episode. Good luck. No worries. Fly out tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Fuck. No worries. Right. Appreciate no it. Good luck. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Cheers. See you, mate.